So ETP ALL is a subtype of uh, T cell ALL that is characterized by very immature markers. So it's probably um, resembling the very first uh, T cell that is produced in the body, a very immature cell. That's a cell that gets to the thymus to give rise there to all the more uh, differentiated T cells. And that uh, T cell is characterized by uh, specific um, cell surface markers uh, that make it different or that make it clearly distinct from the more differentiated forms of TLL. And in particular, it has more what we call stem cell markers like CD34. And it may also have some myeloid markers still because that cell is just, uh, just decided to become a T cell or almost decided to become a T cell, but may still differentiate to myeloid cells as well. So it's a little bit in between the myeloid and the T cells. These, uh, so these markers itself uh, could be targets for, uh, for example, immunotherapy. But of course, they also are present on the normal uh, ETP cells that are present in the body. So that may make it a bit dangerous to uh, use immunotherapy. But these ETP cells also have specific mutations that make them uh, vulnerable to specific kinase inhibitors or other small molecule inhibitors. And that may be the way to go to inhibit these ETP ALL samples. Yeah, so the IL-7 receptor uh, pathway is uh, very important for normal T cell development. Uh, interleukin-7 is the ligand that binds to that receptor and that keeps the cells alive, the early T cells that enter the thymus, it keeps the cells alive and make them proliferate. And these ETP ALL cells hijack that pathway actually, they become completely independent from uh, the need of, uh, of interleukin-7. So they activate that pathway by themselves, by mutations, and these mutations can be in the interleukin-7 receptor itself or further downstream in that signaling pathway in JAK1 or in JAK3 or even in STAT5, which is the transcription factor at the bottom of that pathway that will uh, regulate a lot of genes uh, in those cells. So in ETP ALL, notch mutations are not very frequent. They're a bit less frequent than in the other T ALL uh, samples or other T ALL cases. Uh, but still notch mutations do occur, and so they remain a valid target there. And there's been a number of uh, inhibitors that have been developed uh, in the past years, not directly specific targetly, targeting notch, but targeting the gamma secretase uh, complex. And it's a complex that is needed to activate notch. So if you can inhibit that complex, you can also inhibit the notch protein and so also the mutant notch. So that's clearly some, uh, there's clearly interest in further developing such uh, inhibitors. Unfortunately, they have also some side effects, some severe uh, gastrointestinal toxicity that is associated with treatment with these uh, gamma secretase inhibitors. But I'm sure that they will find a way to overcome that toxicity, and so then those inhibitors may become uh, valid as well. The BCL2 inhibitor is the other one you uh, mentioned. So BCL2 is an, uh, a protein that keeps the cells alive, that prevents apoptosis, uh, cell death. And it's probably closely linked to the interleukin-7 JAK-STAT pathway because BCL2 is a target of STAT5. So if interleukin-7 receptor pathway is activated, BCL2 expression goes up and that keeps the cells alive. Because if a cell decides to proliferate, it doesn't want to die, so it keeps itself alive. Now targeting BCL2 is possible. There's been a number of inhibitors that have been developed. They are currently being tested in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and seem to be having very good effects there. So uh, these inhibitors are there and could be also potentially used in T cell ALL or ETP ALL. So that's definitely a promising target as well. And it's a bit independent from the other mutations because it's a general uh, anti-apoptotic protein. Yes, so that's a, a slightly different um, route. Um, this XP01 or exportin one is a protein that is present in the nucleus and will shuttle proteins from the nucleus to the cytosol. And in normal cells, about two to 300 proteins use XP01 to be shuttled from the nucleus to the cytosol. For example, P53 or erythroblastoma 1 protein are known as important proteins that need to be shuttled out of the nucleus using this XP01. Uh, there's very specific inhibitors for XP01 have been developed initially um, with the aim to use them as HIV inhibitors because also the HIV viral protein uses XP01 to be shuttled out of the nucleus. So these uh, inhibitors have not been taken further for anti-HIV products, but one has looked around and have found by accident actually that these inhibitors seem to be very toxic for cancer cells and much less for normal cells. So it's not understood at the moment how exactly they work. They definitely inhibit XP01 
and inhibit protein shuttling from the nucleus to the cytosol. But why they are really toxic to cancer cells is not known. But that is again a very important uh, route also for therapy since these inhibitors could potentially be used in all types of leukemia, independent of any specific mutations that need to be present. If you want to target the cell with, an, with a JAK inhibitor, you need to have a JAK mutation or an interleukin-7 mutation, while the XPO1 uh, inhibitors seem to be generally toxic to all types of leukemia. And so that's a, a promising agent, but we do need to understand a bit better how they actually lead to uh, cell death in the leukemia cells. Uh, so we use, typically to, to mimic what happens in a patient, we use xenograft mouse models where we can grow the leukemia cells from a patient in an immune deficient mouse. Uh, and that mimics quite well the situation in vivo in a patient, but it's of course a mouse environment. And so I just want to mention that there is some risk that what we see in the mouse and in our experimental approaches is not completely translatable to a human patient. And so there's always some danger there that if we see a very good activity of a drug in such experimental systems, that later on when we move to a patient uh, setting, that that drug is not uh, giving the hoped results. Uh, so there is some limitations of that system that we have to realize that it's only a model system and it's not completely reflecting the true situation.